Hey, what's up guys? So this is gonna be part of a new series of videos all about low power design. So how to get your project to run off batteries for years. Uh, and I think down the road we can even talk about energy harvesting. So ambient RF energy, uh, solar, thermal, and so on. Uh, but in this video, I wanna show you a very simple circuit that allows the Arduino to kill power to itself. So let's take a closer look and see what I got going on. Okay, so some of this might actually look familiar and that's because this is the same circuit from my last video on the latch circuit. So I'll put a link in the description below to that. Um, but what we have here is the latch circuit and a standalone Arduino set up here. This is the AT Mega 328P-PU. Uh, we have it running at 16 megahertz with five volts applied up here and uh, we have a blank sketch loaded into it. I have everything commented here, commented out here, so it's just void setup, blank, void loop, blank, so the bone stock Arduino sketch. And in fact, we're actually going to remove the USB to serial programmer completely from this. Uh, the latch circuit is completely disconnected, and I just wanna benchmark this circuit to see what it's actually pulling just doing nothing. Uh, so up here you can see on the source measure unit, we're applying 5 volts and we're pulling about 16 milliamps. So 16 milliamps is a lot of current just to be doing nothing. So now let's, uh, let's reintroduce some things to this. So let me rebuild the circuit here a little bit. Okay, so now I have the latch circuit combined with the Arduino over here so that the Arduino now gets its power from the latch circuit. And you can see that up on the meter here, we're getting zero current draw. So this is in a very, obviously a very low power state. And as soon as the door switch, I've got a little magnetic door switch over here. As soon as I come within that proximity, you see the green LED pop on here. And what the green LED means is that we're applying power to the Arduino and then it boots up and then you can see on the code over here, we've got the LED pin defined on, on uh, digital pin two, the power off pin on digital pin three, set both of those to outputs. And then in the loop, as soon as it boots up, make the LED pin go high, wait two seconds, and then the power off pin high and what this does is it actually kills power to the Arduino. So that's kind of how it all works. So as soon as I just get hit with that for a second, power is applied, it boots up, the LED, the orange LED goes high for two seconds, and then it kills power. And if you watch this up on the meter there, you see about 18 milliamps, 21 milliamps, and then nothing. So it's kind of a cool circuit if you just need to get in, get out. Uh, and this doesn't have to be a door switch. Um, it could also be an output from a real-time clock module that's running. So a very low power real-time clock that's running. You configure it to wake you up every you know, three seconds or whatever. Um, what's nice about this is that it kills the power completely to the Arduino. The big downside, of course, is that you do lose power. So if you had any variables in there that you were using, you'd have to go store those away into uh, non-volatile memory uh, another downside, of course, is that it takes time for it to boot up. You can see that as soon as power is applied, I have to wait for it to boot up, boots up, the LED goes high and then kills power. Um, but this is, this is nice because it does latch it. So um, you can quickly get that digital input, latches it quickly, applies the power, gets in, gets out, and you're done. Um, so over here to the circuit, this is how it all works. We've got the same exact latch circuit as before. Here is that door switch, and it's basically just pulling, same as before, it's pulling this P-channel MOSFETs gate to ground, enabling it, and as soon as that is enabled, it outputs the power here to the Arduino. This becomes five volts, you can see that happen. And it's momentary, so that when we have five volts here, now we have five volts applied to the gate of this N-channel MOSFET, and that is enabled and it pulls the P-channel gate low, so it kind of takes over what this momentary switch was doing, and now it's latched in, and we've got five volts there, five volts is applied to the Arduino. Then 
uh, this uh, switch over here is acting like our digital output, our power off pin from the Arduino. So as soon as this goes high, we are enabling this NPN transistor here, and then that pulls this gate on the end channel here low, thus killing power to the entire circuit. So this is actually killing power to itself. And that's why I've got this little 10 microfarad capacitor here. And that's because we kind of have a race condition here because as soon as I kill power to myself, I can no longer drive this pin high. So this capacitor kind of acts, um, it, it kind of slows things down. So as soon as I, I enable that, that transistor here, it stays low just long enough so that it can kill power to the entire circuit there. And that's kind of how it all works. Um, so coming up in future videos, we can do some cool things. So instead of killing power to the Arduino, we can go through and turn off different peripherals. We can turn off the, uh, the analog to digital converter, the uh, brownout detection, um, the uh, watchdog timer. So I mentioned that we, um, we could use an external real-time clock to wake ourselves up and then do something and then go back to sleep or kill power. Well, the Arduino actually has a built-in watchdog timer that we can go into a very low power state and then automatically wake up at some interval uh, without killing power to ourselves. So that's all coming up, different low power techniques, things to watch out for, what the digital pin states should be. Uh, and I wanna actually benchmark all of that out using the, uh, the source measure unit up here. So uh, that's kinda how the whole thing works. Uh, just a quick little video here, so thanks for watching.